I'm Norma Lee McLeod. Occupy is out. You cannot evict an idea. Fredericton pulls down the last encampment in the Maritimes. The mayor defends his decision. Your message uh, is no longer getting out. The public feels that, in my estimation, you have worn out your welcome. And good dogs with bad habits. As long as you pay attention to the squeal, he's going to repeat the squeal. Advice on how to change your dog's behavior. Dogs as a species, they are really bound in their routines. A new year, a new routine. Dog behavior expert Sylvia J takes your calls. This is Maritime Noon. Time to talk. This is my home. We would have easily taken this down by ourselves if it were due to a court injunction. That is the way the world should work. Well, that is the sound of chainsaws taking down one of the last Occupy encampments in the country. At 5 a.m., staff from the city of Fredericton moved into Phoenix Square beside City Hall and dismantled the one remaining tent belonging to members of Occupy Fredericton. Fredericton Mayor Brad Woodside was on site for the removal, and here's his take on what happened. You know, it was very amicable, and and uh, despite the fact which, uh, you know, you might see on some sites that are saying they were attacked, uh, it it was done in a very quick, professional, efficient manner. One uniformed police officer. Uh, I did not want a, a, a large police presence, and that one police officer did absolutely nothing because he wasn't required to do anything. The decision was made to do it uh, at a time that would cause the least amount of uh, disruption to uh, people that uh, that work in close proximity and uh, traffic and and so on and so forth so that was the reason there was no uh, uh, no conspiracy here to do it uh, because lawyers were out of town or anything like that basically uh, the decision was made to do it uh, and to do it quietly and efficiently and professionally and i believe that that happened well that's fredericton mayor brad woodside alex davenport was in the tent when workers arrived to take it down he had been staying there since early november and he had gone so far as to have his home address legally changed to the occupy site alex is with us now hello alex hi and julian renault is also with us on the line he's one of the original organizers of occupy fredericton and he arrived at the the encampment shortly after city staff removed the tent. Hello to you, Julian. Hello. All right, Alex, the mayor says it was all very amicable, very friendly. Would you agree? Uh, well, they took it down while we were inside of it, and it actually uh, hit uh, Kevin on the head, actually. Like, One of I the other campers? Yeah, I don't think that it was very safe of them taking it down while we were inside of it. If they, like, basically, if they had a legal reason for us to leave, then they would be able to get a police officer to come in and forcibly take us out and then be able to take it down safely. What's the difference? Uh, well, basically, uh, it would be a legal procedure, and we would have a chance to be able to actually, actually have a voice in this. The mayor has negotiated with you, though, in the past about taking this down. He was there New Year's Eve and asked you when you would remove the tent and wasn't given any date, so he took this action. Do you not think that was enough notice? No, I don't. I don't. I, I think that he should have went through the court process, and I think he should actually be conducting himself more like Dennis O'Keefe, the mayor of uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. He's actually supporting the Occupy movement. He's setting a pretty good example in that respect. Julian, does it really matter? I mean, it seemed to the public like this had fizzled. There were only a handful of protesters in the camp when the chainsaws moved in, and, and you came along after. What would you say? Uh, well, it certainly hasn't fizzled. That's the perception uh, that some people have. But it hasn't fizzled. The reason that there are only a few protesters there, well, there are a couple reasons. First of all, we downsized the camp uh, as part of a compromise with the mayor that we made in the past. We downsized the camp in exchange for the mayor leaving us alone and letting us stay there. And in the mayor's words, he said, uh, you're there and I'm going to let you stay there after we downsized the camp. Uh, so it actually wasn't big enough to house many more than three people anyway. 
at least without, you know, sleeping on top of each other. The second reason that there were only three people there at the time is that contrary to what some people the public think, almost all of us have jobs. I was sleeping at home with my wife when I got a call at 5.15 in the morning uh, saying, you know, they're taking down our structure with chainsaws, get down here. You know, it, uh, it was not a good way to do it. And, uh, and we certainly haven't fizzled out. In fact, this was in the middle of our 10 Days of Christmas presentation, which is uh, we put together a bunch of progressive initiatives for the city relating to efficient public transit and urban gardening and so on and so forth. And we proposed those to the city, and we put those pamphlets under the Christmas tree in red present boxes um, so that people from the public could come and see them. And they took those, too. And they also took all of our protest signs. In fact, the letters that the mayor gave us said not only that we couldn't have the structure, but that we couldn't have protest signs. Well, wait, now the mayor said that you can protest from dawn to dusk. You just can't camp there. Can't camp there or have signs, apparently, because they took our signs. They called them enhanced attraction signage. Now, if you run a Google search for enhanced attraction signage, you would find precisely one result, and that's the Fredericton bylaw about it. But it doesn't even define what that is. But we're pretty sure that enhanced attraction signage is meant to keep businesses from erecting large obstructive signs not to abrogate one's right to have a uh, protest sign. You know, did did the message of your movement get lost in the tents? What do you think? People started to focus on the encampments more than what you had to say. We didn't fully lose our message. There are some people from the public who certainly, uh, you know, didn't bother to actually come and talk to us and find out what the message was. We didn't have a powerful enough uh, media machine, certainly, behind us. Part of that is uh, due to the fact that towards the end there, especially around Christmas and New Year's, it was really hard to uh, get people to work on Occupy because people are away on vacation, people are with their families, and so on and so forth. So uh, certainly the message hasn't been as strong as it was in the past, for example, on October 15th when we had our first rally. Alex, But it's still there. Alex, what's next for you? Um, are you planning any recourse? Uh, well, we're going to need to take it, take that up in some of the general assemblies. And uh, I'd just like to add, like, basically, in that video, you can see where I'm asking Brad Woodside, why is it that you didn't take this to court beforehand? And he basically replies with something like, I said I was going to take it down. So, like, this is a great example of the way that he that he's working. Basically, he thinks that... Basically, if he tells you in advance that he's going to do something, even if it's illegal, it's automatically okay to do. This is a perfect example of what this movement's about. It's to bring to the forefront the way that authority finger, figures are conducting themselves. Basically, if, he, if, the way, if the way he evicted us is any example of the normal way that he conducts himself, by this I mean not following pro- proper le- legal procedures, how can we expect him to make proper decisions when it comes to things like taking care of the environment and social and economic programs? Like, I'm not talking about just our, our Mayor Brad Woodside. It goes for anyone who's responsible for making laws and decisions that affect everyone. Uh, the only way changes can be made on any issue is for people to stand up and take part in their community. And the Occupy movement is nothing more than that. That's all we are. All right. Any, uh, any immediate plans to, to get together and regroup? Julian? Oh, c- certainly. I mean, we're, we're not going to, uh, to stop what we're doing. Um, we're still working on initiatives and so on. We're going to speak to our lawyer when he returns from vacation later this week and, uh, and see what we might do legally. And certainly as for what we're, what we're doing, we're going to continue with our initiatives and, uh, you know, try to, try to make a difference. This is a setback, but it's certainly not the end. All right, I want to thank you both. That's uh, Alex Davenport, one of the last Occupy campers in Fredericton. Good luck, Alex. Thank you. And Julian Renault, uh, one of the organizers of Occupy New Brunswick. Thanks for your time, Julian. Thank you very much. And by the way, Fredericton Mayor Brad Woodside says he's learned from this and he's now considering legislation to make sure there isn't another occupation when the weather warms up.
a lot of people were caught off guard. And uh, the one thing that I don't want to have happen this spring or this summer is Occupy Movement setting up an Officer Square, Odell Park, Wilmot Park, uh, down along the river uh, on Waterloo Row. Uh, I just could see it getting out of hand. I could see anybody that had a gripe or a protest would pitch a tent. Uh, all of a sudden, they're barbecuing and having a wonderful time. So are you, are you then thinking about legislation that would, that would be put in place which would prevent this kind of protests from occurring again? In any public space, crack or crevice, absolutely. And I think the public would expect nothing less. And of course, we'd like to know what you think. Did the Occupy movement change anything? Give us a call, 1-800-565-5463. Send an email to marnoon at cbc.ca, or you can tweet us at CBC Maritime Noon.